Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the Jeep and some of the modifications that we decided to do before our first overlanding trip. Remember, we're just beginners. We don't know what we're doing. So, before you hit the dislike button, remember that you started out somewhere. Hit the like button if you like what we have to say. Either way, hit the subscribe button so we know that you're watching. I appreciate it, come on. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is what we use on the trail for our navigation system. I would say, other than the tent, the Garmin InReach Mini and the standard iPad is probably the best thing that we have. Um, my iPad does not have any type of Wi-Fi, or it does have Wi-Fi, I'm sorry. It doesn't have a cell chip. So it has no cellular capability, but what it does is I can connect it to my phone if I absolutely need the internet. But what we do is we download all of our maps traditionally into Gaia, and Gaia is the GPS navigation system that we use. So with Gaia, it allows us to import all of the files from the various sites that we use when we're looking for a trail. I would say having these two as a combination is probably the best thing that we've came up with so far a lot of people use it. Everybody says it's great, and it works freaking great for us. Um, it's a very simple system to use. It allows you to track your tracks. It allows you to share your tracks and to share your trails. Um, there's a community that you can share it with online with Gaia, or you can just keep it for yourself, whatever that is. I notice a lot of people want to share their tracks, um, and they force you to pay for a Patreon account in order to receive the tracks that they went on. I don't understand why they are using that as, when I say they, I traditionally mean people on YouTube. They use that as like a ploy to get people to give them money, which I understand this stuff is expensive. Um, if this is your full-time job, I get it. If it's not your full-time job, you shouldn't charge somebody to tell them where you've been. That is, in my opinion, the whole point of the off-road community is to be able to go places that you see other people going and having to pay for it. I, it's, I'm not gonna get into that whole situation because I have bored my wife with hours of frustration about that. But, so what we do is we use the Gaia and the Garmin. Those two things together allow us the opportunity to share the tracks with you guys or to keep track of where we've been. With the tracks, it allows us to know every place that we've been so far, how long it took, the mileage, the elevation, all of the different changes that came along with using this. Um, and for example, when we get lost, we can always find our way home. That is the greatest thing about the Garmin InReach Mini and what it allows us to do is it transmits your location live with your iPad and then whenever you're out and you want to go off on a trail that is not necessarily the trail that you intended to go on the first time, you can always take a different road and find your way back because it marks where you went and then you just turn around and follow that trail back. So that's the coolest thing for me. I think a lot of what we did on our first overlanding trip was going to places that we had seen um, and trails that we had found and we tried to stay to that specific trail just because there was so much that we haven't seen the this time when we go what i'm going to do is just pick an area and if i see a trail that i want to take i'm going to take that trail it doesn't really make a difference where it is or how i got to get there i'll just be able to find my way back and we can get back to whatever trip we're trying to take. So for me, I think that the Garmin and the iPad together is obviously one of the most important pieces because you can't get lost and paper maps are great. Having paper maps are good. Knowing how to read paper maps is even better. Everyone's going to have an issue with this conversation, but I don't travel with paper maps. It's 2020. 
I believe that the technology will be able to get me where I need to go. The technology has gotten me where I, where I am, getting me out. And even if I had a map, if I didn't know exactly where I was in the first place, I wouldn't be able to use it. That's my two cents. Some people are going to be disagreeing with that. That's okay. Um, so as far as GPS and the navigation, that's what we use for that. Let's take a look in the back um, at the platform system that I have where we store all of our water. All right, so what we use here is a hook road platform. I don't know exactly what it's called. It doesn't really matter. But what it does for us is we put all of our water, um, some of our food, our camp chairs, our cooking table, all of that goes up here on the top of this platform. Now, when we bought this platform, we did not realize that because of the backbone system, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second, for the rack up top, that this had to be modified a bit. So there are some edges on the braces that connect to the hard top area of your Jeep. Now, when we put those on, we had to take off about a quarter to a half inch, depending upon the slope or the angle. Um, when we did that, we took that off. We had to use a grinder and they fit in there now, but with the backbone system that's inside the Jeep, it's not going to fit snug like it would if there was no backbone system. So this was not intentionally designed to work with the backbone system just like everything else you got to make some modifications in order for it to work um, that's the modification that we made I have a video on it that I could share if necessary but essentially we just ripped a strip right off the side with a grinder um, got those angles to match up on the inside and it worked just fine so I mean as you can see this thing is freaking heavy my stepson sits up here and I mean you can't there's not too much as you can pack on here that's gonna give it any problems. We put two five gallon jugs of water for us to use while we're out on the trail. Um, and that is all the water that we take with us. And typically right here is where we have a cooler. I know a lot of people have fridges. Like I said before, this is overlanding for beginners and I'm a beginner. I've never done this before. So we just got a cooler because that cooler was free. It was sitting in my garage already. And then over here is where we have our camp kitchen set up. Now the camp kitchen setup is this huge tote. Like I said before, we put so much in that tote when we took it with us. It's probably 36 by 24 and 24 inches deep. It's huge. We had two stoves, a bunch of pans, a bunch of pots, a bunch of cups, all the stuff that we don't, we didn't even use. We literally just kept it in there and carried it around with us for 6,000 miles. So on the next trip, we are gonna make some changes to what we use. That way we don't have a bunch of unnecessary crap that we're hauling around with us. Um, and we'll have more space. So as you guys see, space is the most important piece. And when you pack too much, you have to move everything around to get to one thing. And that one thing may not be that important except for maybe five minutes of your day, but you have to get to it. So you have to move things around. So that's what we got back here. Let's check out the backbone system. Can I see? talk about the backbone system the backbone system from rhino rack is what we decided to get initially I did not want to spend the thirteen hundred dollars on the backbone system and the rack itself the reason we ended up doing that is because after I did research I realized that getting the rack I wanted to get which is just one of the racks that connects to these rain guards on the side of the Jeep um, probably wouldn't support the weight of the tent with two people in it more importantly, I don't want to be stuck on the trail with my rack broken and nowhere to put my tent. So what we decided to do is spend the money to get the backbone system, to get the rack, um, and it's actually worked out really good. The tent connects to the rack pretty easily. Um, now, when it comes to installing the rack, A, you got to drill holes in whatever vehicle you decide to put the backbone system in. And I think it's only the Jeep. 
I could be wrong. Don't really know. But what I will say is I didn't put the holes in the Jeep. I wasn't coming home to my wife and telling her, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, I drilled holes in the Jeep, but it's leaking or it's broken. She was already stressed out enough that I was going to be drilling holes in the Jeep. So I so conveniently put that onto somebody else. Um, the guy who helped me works at Honest Speed Shop here in Columbus, Ohio. And I put the rack together, he did all the drilling. I just didn't want the responsibility of breaking the Jeep. So after we got everything drilled, we measured multiple times um, before we put any holes into the Jeep. And, and I know they say it doesn't take that long, but it took two guys an entire day. So make sure you have enough time to actually put the rack on properly. Because if you don't, you're gonna have problems. Um, and if you miss drill by a couple millimeters, you're gonna have some issues. So take the time to measure. Rhino Rack does a great job of sending you this big packet with everything. It has spacers for which Jeep it is and, and how to drill and when to drill. So they made it pretty easy, but it doesn't take away any of the anxiety of drilling a hole in your view. Um, with the backbone system, it connects straight with the bolts that hold your hard top on. So that's super easy. It's not going to make it much more inconvenient or any inconvenient in any way to take the top off when it's summertime and we want to ride around with the top off. That was one of the biggest attractions for my wife. She's always wanted a Jeep to take the tops off and to have that open air feel. So when we were doing it, I had to do a bunch of research to make sure that it wouldn't be a huge deal when we wanted to take that top off. And it's really not. There's two, three black pieces of steel that connect the rack to the top of the Jeep that you are always going to have on there, which I don't mind. I think it looks kind of cool, um, but some people might not like that, but it's something to consider before you go spend all that money on a backbone system or any type of rack system whatsoever. Um, so what I want to do is take you up to the front of the Jeep, show you the winch that we have, the bumper that we have, um, and then hopefully you guys will stick around for the rest. It's way Okay, let's talk about the winch and the bumper. Um, the bumper we decided to go with is the OEM bumper. It's the steel bumper. And over here on the, the bumper, it has these bolts that typically has an extension on either side, which makes the bumper the full length bumper. But when you get it, you can simply take those bolts out, remove that insert, put the bolts back in, and now you have a shorty bumper. That for us, seem to work very well. We don't have any issues with it. I actually really like it. The reason we ended up with this bumper though is not by choice. It was more so out of necessity. When we decided to get a new bumper and we were doing all these modifications before our trip, we couldn't access any other bumpers. From my understanding, when Jeep released the 2020 JL, they didn't release all the spec sheets to all the different manufacturers quick enough, so they weren't able to manufacture enough parts quick enough for people like me who wanted to purchase um, aftermarket product. Well, with that, we ended up having to go with the OEM bumper, which I'm actually extremely happy with. We decided to go with the Smittybilt XRC winch. Um, it's not the wireless one. It does have a plug over here where you plug in your remote and you have to press the button to be winched out or to winch somebody out. We like the winch. We haven't had to use it yet. Hope we don't have to, unless it's to pull somebody else out in the future. But we wanted to be prepared when we went on our trip and we didn't want to waste time or effort trying to get ourselves out of a situation without having a winch. So getting the bumper, it wasn't our first choice. We had a different bumper that we were gonna go with, but we couldn't get our hands on it in time. I would have had to wait about three months in order for it to be manufactured and for us to get our hands on it. So we called a bunch of Jeep dealers. Um, we found one dealership that had an additional one that they allowed us to come and grab. So we went up there and got it. It is about $1,000 just for this standard bumper, the steel bumper. You can get aftermarket ones for much cheaper, but this is what we had the opportunity to get. So this is what we ended up with, but we love it. I like the look of it. It minimizes the exposure to the wheels and tires. Um, we are gonna be doing a lift later on. We are gonna do bigger wheels. We are gonna do bigger tires. So having that shortened bumper is actually going to make uh, a good situation for us in terms of wheel travel and whatnot when we get into uh, more difficult trails. So 
that's what we have now is the OEM bumper, the shorty bumper taking off the ends, and the Smitty Built XRC winch, and it's not the wireless. Down.